So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a 3D to AI workflow for creating furniture design using Blender and Stable Diffusion. So without any further delay, let's jump straight into it. And first off, I'm going to be designing a very simple piece of furniture uh, using Blender. And you can find a lot of tutorials on how to do such a thing, so I won't waste much time on showing you how to do that. Uh, but I'm going to show you just the basic steps that I did in modeling this piece. Basically, I've added some in... Uh, uh, basic cubes uh, to make the basic shape of the furniture and block it out and the only hard part here and it's not really a hard part there's like a method that you can find in a hundred YouTube videos out there on how to make uh, the cushion basically what I did I just added in some subdivisions making sure that I align with my reference and it's preferable that you look for better reference using websites such as IKEA and the like afterwards uh, what I did is basically I added in some seams uh, using a bevel modifier and I just sculpted it basically so it would match uh, whatever it is that the reference is and here I am just sculpting it using the using the proportional edit tool it's basically like sculpting for low poly objects and it's not really a complicated process, I'm just showing this to you so you can get uh, the idea of my 3D to AI workflow. And I don't really care much about the topology of what I'm doing, I just care about the shape. As you can see here, I didn't do much in terms of optimizing the topology for shading or UV and wrapping, because I'm gonna take a shortcut for shading and rendering uh, this piece that I have here and giving it variations as well. So the next step, once you're satisfied, with whatever it is that you made within Blender is to take a screenshot, then go into Stable Diffusion. What we're going to do with Stable Diffusion is we're going to build a simple prompt that's basically going to mention whatever it is that you want uh, in your picture, uh, the medium in which you want it. I prefer that you write something as a realistic photograph of an interior, the resolution of what you want, and some websites to use as a reference. As for the negative things, uh, the bad proportions, you do not want it to be of low quality, you do not want it to be grainy, out of focus, you do not want a bad picture. Uh, the basic uh, uh, international, uh, if you want to say, uh, prompts that are usually used. And once I'm done building my prompt, what I'm going to do is use, again, the screenshot or a render, a black and white render, uh, preferably of your scene within Blender and use it in control net. Here I wanted to add something at the back of my furniture piece, this wall. I mean, lighting is not necessary, I just wanted to see how it would look like. So I'm just going to take a random snapshot of this piece. Now it's going in control net. And inside ControlNet, I'm going to be using three important control steps. One of them is going to be MLSD, and I'm going to set it up to 0.5 threshold in order for it to recognize uh, whatever it is in the picture. I'm going to use the depth and the canny model. And in this case, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to add a LoRa. Uh, a LoRa file is basically something like a checkpoint, a mini checkpoint, that could be easily trained uh, in low VRAM settings and I'm already getting good results without even using the control net but with LoRa's you can get fantastic results the LoRa that I'm using here I'm going to put it in the description so you can download it and use it for yourself from 7.8i it's basically a furniture LoRa so you can so that AI can recognize what furniture is when you put it in the prompt this is what you can get basically using LoRa's and control net from a 3d render uh, I should have put in more work with it for the MLSD. The MLSD is barely recognizable. However, the other control net models that I used are fantastic. And make sure to, to write in a prompt for the lighting that you want. If you want cinematic lighting, dramatic lighting, uh, realistic, ultra detailed, these are the prompts that you should use if you want to get such good renders. And this already looks like something from a brochure because that's what I put in my prompt. I like the fabric textile and how it recognized that these two cubes that I made are basically 
cushions that should have seams. It recognized the wood because of the MLSD model, even though the MLSD model is not good. Uh, the depth model helped me a lot with it. So basically what, should you, what you should be using is the depth model, the canning model, the MLSD model, and the soft lines model in, all, in order to get good results. And you can get really fantastic results even without the 3D to AI workflow if you're not comfortable with Blender. However, if you want to get control over the renders that you get, you should use ControlNet and Blender. So, um, I strongly believe that 3D to AI workflows are going to be the future for furniture design and other uh, designs as well. I've done an isometric room design tutorial from 3D to AI. I highly suggest you check it out if you were interested in this tutorial. You're going to find it interesting as well. So that was it for today's tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.